when I was doing the USB connector the other day I found something quite disturbing and uh, I don't know whether you can see this on camera I've not noticed it before because I've not ridden the bike can you see that movement that's actually a lot of movement so it looks like the head bearing the steering bearing has gone in here so it's quite a big job in some ways uh, the bearing has just arrived from motor works it's only 20 pounds but it's what else we find the wheel has to come off the forks out handlebars off again and then we have the difficulty of taking the top yoke out having it on the bench, heating it, getting the bearing out, checking the bearing and everything else. I was quite surprised, I went on YouTube just to see how many people have done it and there's nobody that's done it on the 1150GS. There's, some, there's somebody who gives a very short four minute video on doing it on an 1100RT uh, 1990 something one. The principle is exactly the same, but very little is shown. It just shows once everything is out. So it'll be quite interesting. I've got to go on Haynes manual almost totally. And some of that, a lot of it is missed out. It just says take this off. So the fun begins. The first thing is to take the front wheel off. So anything that's attached to the front wheel, such as the mud guard here, And just remove and the same on the other side and the calipers that were so beautifully talked up before the speedo cable needs to come off and also the ABS ring here even though of course I don't have ABS anymore but I'm not taking all the uh, cables and sensors off they might as well just stay there the speedo is a Phillips screw the speedo cable off. The, the front wheel has these crash bobbins on so they've got to be removed first. There's a clamp on the end of this stanchion that you just need to slacken off. And undo the bolt. 17 the best way is just to screw in the bolt that you took off a little bit just gently tap it and that is pushing the axle out which is quite rusty Which can only go so far because this is a, a smallish bolt. So you can see this side, and they give you a hole. So this is where you've got to watch 
what comes off. So you've got a cap here because you forget it when you come back to it. So just put it on there for the moment. Lower the wheel down. Now I can take the bike up. So you don't have to take everything off the handlebars. Imagine you have to take all the controls and the wiring and the brake pipes. Oh, a nightmare. So all you've got to do is undo them and move them back. They lift and just rest there. So what I'll do is just prise open. There's a little slot on the sides of this cover here. There it is. Now you can see the bolt and the bearing, the suspect bearing that's got to come out. Easier said than done, but first of all, you have to take these off and drop the forks. That one. And that one. I'm going to undo these two bolts, and that's it. The forks will just drop down. But first of all, we have to undo the bolts on the cross member. So this is what we want to slacken here. And these are torques. So you need a 22 spanner and a 14 hex, a uh, 14 socket. Oh. The stanchions, now that the bolts off, should actually, oh, they do, push down inside the sleeve itself. So this is what I've got to take off next with the removal of this bolt here. But first of all I've got to disconnect the cable to the ignition. So I'm going to follow that through and find out where it is. There's a circlip in here to get out first. So it's a big Allen bolt. That wasn't very tight. I was expecting that to be really tight. That could be the problem. But you don't normally just tighten these down because they're done to a torque and left forever. And then the circlip put on. So I'm going to change the theory now, whatever happens. but. That was a strange thing. And there it is. The whole fork should now, with a bit of effort, twist and, and drop down. There it comes. Now, I'm going to have to raise the bike up to be able to, as they're touching the floor at the moment, as you can see. So let me just lift the bike up again. I didn't think these are tapered, and I didn't think that would go through here. It will, but the dust seal will just stop it. So I can get this dust seal off. so thick with rust in there. So that's the fork seals and this is the dust seal which I'm going to have to replace. There 
here we are. One foot leg. Ready to be serviced. Here are the both the forks. You can see. Well, I don't know whether you can see. They are sh shower forks. I've just cleaned the yoke up on the inside. Um, and I've put it between two blocks of wood because what you have to do now is heat it to 100 degrees. Um, BMW seemed quite specific about that, 100, 105 degrees. And then using a 32 socket, that'll fit exactly in here. I then noticed that this is a washer. Didn't notice that before. Looks like a brass hole bronze washer there, so put that to one side, don't forget to put that back, and then a 32 socket fits perfectly in there for, for knocking it, hammering it through with these two pieces of wood until it drops out, and it drops out with the thread, then you've got to do the same again, heat it and knock the thread out. It's the thread we want to keep, it's the bearing of course for changing. However, I've got no way of knowing how I get this to 100 degrees, so last night, late last night, I ordered a basic digital infrared th thermometer from Amazon. It was due to come between 2 and 4 o'clock today. It's now 20 to 4. It's just changed between quarter to 3 and quarter to 5, as it does. But it's still an amazing service, so I'm not going to moan. But I can't really start this because I've got no idea how hot 100 degrees C is. So my digital infrared thermometer has come. It's only a very basic one, but it's, it's, it means it's quite easy. So if I just go like that, for instance, you can see that the metal at the moment is 19 degrees. And I've got to get it to 100. So I'm going to try my hot gun as opposed to a flame because I'm quite aware that these are bushes here in a plastic rubbery surround so I don't want to use a flame. So I'll carry on but I know it's noisy so I'll switch off. So I've been going for three minutes. 49 degrees, so it's quicker than I thought it would be. And I've got to get the whole of that area at 100. Just two more minutes have gone past. 82. Eighty two on that side. Hundred. 87 there. Oh, it is working, isn't it? God. I'm amazed. I mustn't touch it because 100 is quite hot. Wow, <laughs> that was brilliant. So now I've got to heat it again and try and get this thread out of the middle. I think I need to put that in the vise. See the grease is pouring out now from the bearing. Here's the new bearing. Got to drive it back in before it gets warm.
there it is. Home. Now I'll take it over on the vise. And that is it. The whole thing has cooled down now and we want to clean these threads up because some of the grease from the old bearing may have gone onto the threads. I'm just wipe cleaning it with isopropyl alcohol just to clean up the threads. There we go. And whatever happens don't forget that so blue lot tight on this thread. Got to talk that up in a minute. Look at that. There's no movement at all there. Absolutely smooth, beautiful. I just want to clean that out and we've got a circuit to put in. There's a groove just above a seal. 45 Newton meters. It is there. And this little cap with its cut out at the bottom, which is there. Little cap goes in. And there we have it, one renewed. It didn't take that long, it wasn't that difficult. So you could do it yourself. So now I'm going to strip the forks down and see what to do with that. So that'll be the next instalment.